Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are here in chapter 8 of Binding Blade Hard Mode. We got through the hardest part of the game, so we're moving on to what should be a smoother journey from here on out. Joining me today, we have Aeromancer Draco Lord. The slog of a chapter. We have Double TP. Hello. And we have Gar uh, Garlisle. Uh, hey Blizzy Ned, thanks for being by. No problem whatsoever. So yeah, we got through chapter 7, we got through the outskirts of Otsi, now we actually have to go inside the fortress and take it back. And Alina's been taken hostage, so we've got to rescue her as well. And at the same time, some of the, like, Knights of Ostia and this mercenary are coming to help us too. But oh boy, have we got a lot to get through. But this chapter isn't so bad because, well for one thing, there's no Wyverns, so that's a big relief. Two, we also have Zealot now, who's basically Marcus, but better. Like, seriously, if you look at his stats, he's literally better mark because he doesn't have as much availability. Well, this is still going to be like one of those chapters where it's still not the easy chapter. Well, no, it's hard mode. It's not easy. It's just not as so much of a hassle because, again, mainly because you don't have to deal with the bloody Wyverns. I mean, after this chapter, it's going to get better. But uh, here, you still have this early, you know, corridor hallway you need to get through because there is going to be the thieves showing up, the reinforcements showing yeah, up. Oh, yeah, Cap makes another appearance, too. Yeah. Oh, the question. Whoever in their right mind thought it was a good idea to drop Wyverns in Chapter 7? I mean, in the uh, in normal mode, it's um it's okay because again they're not that difficult to do with, and it, and it kind of makes sense because you know working with Burn and you know Burn is famous for their weapons. It's just that in hard mode, they made them powerful as shit. <laughs> Ooh, in hard mode, you make everything hard. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but at the same time, other hard modes have done a better job at making the enemies feel a bit more balanced, whereas Vine Bay hard mode just jacks up to eleven. Yeah. But like something with the other games, they tend to do it a lot better. I think it's down, more down to, well, it's not just finding player units being stronger, but it's also the, sorry, the enemy being stronger, but also they didn't really compensate for the how many weak units or just not that good units there are in the beginning of Binding Blade. It's that unit balancing problem comes in. Yeah, Seven, which doesn't have flawless unit balancing. Yeah, it doesn't, but you know, you've got you've got better people, right? You've got Marcus, but you also got Kent and Sane to run off. You've got Hector and so on, who's you know uh, he's good at like fighting and all that jazz. I think on this chapter, you really see that it's uh, the best, like how it's uh, kind of screwy. Because in this chapter, you see here Astol, mm -hmm. he's like the best Steve. But yeah, pretty much. Uh, uh, what the, I think we can call the um, the Scrub Squad. This is Marf and the other two. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, Astor's actually, uh, I had to change, so Astor's gonna be my main thief for this run because I used Chad last time, but right now I could use someone with actually decent bases, so we're going with Astor this time. And yeah, later on we're gonna see the other units, and I know everyone's interested to see a certain knight show up and whether or not I use her. I mean, I've already gone on record saying that it was a case of it depends on what the level she gets, so we're going to find out in this chapter whether or not. But I also had a change of heart too. Originally, I wasn't going to use the Lelina because I was like, I've already used the Lelina, I don't want to use her again. But then I thought to myself, wait a minute, I need to recruit Gonzalez, I need to recruit Garrett. Might as well try and train her up because I'm going to have to deploy her for two chapters regardless. Yeah, I would advise to use her because there are the recruitments, there is the guidance chapter, and uh, she gets a pretty good uh, magic growth. Which yeah, she's got a good magic growth, but that's really about it. Because, like, again, if, if you're lucky and she gets speed blessed, Lena can be, like, really, really impressive. But on hard mode especially, sh she really, like, without, you know, on average, she, or she can hit hard, but that's literally it. And she can, like, rarely ever double people, so... Yeesh. <laughs> From an actually okay unit on, like, normal difficulty to, like, freaking borderline useless on harder difficulty. It I happens. Her, I think her and Edward need to start a support group. Yeah. <laughs> no, that the hard, hard, um, get hard, hard mode screw over. Yeesh. Well, the thing is, though, I'm not even crazy about hard, oh, well, not hard, and, um, what's his name? Edward, because I'm sorry, I love Rafady and Dawn, but when you give me Zyhark within, you know, a Six couple chapters, chapters yeah. and <laughs> Why bother? he has amazing base stats. <laughs> I know. I mean, again, he's still, like, you know, Edward could do stuff in the early game, you know, he's still pretty, um, pretty good, there's quite a few acts in him, he's just, again, when you, once you get Zyhark, unless you've got a really RNG blessed as hell, um, Edward, it's just one of those things that's like, why bother? <laughs> I, I could train him just so that I can bring Zyhark over to the Grail Mercenaries. Just because I... It makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, ow. 
it makes more sense, in my opinion, for Zyhar to be the Grail mercenaries because. Well, yeah, I mean, he worked with the them. dude's backstory as well. It's not just because he's worked with them. Like, the dude likes Lagoos. Why is he working with people that are trying to kill Lagoos? Well, you know, things are changing in day and a bit. I mean, look, you know, I mean, look what happened to Jill. She's completely changed. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, well, yeah, unfortunately, how's that a bad thing? I mean, yeah, like, seriously, how is that, like, a bad thing? Like, Jill's a more better unit than, like, Brady and Dawn. Like, I'm she, like, <laughs> unit wise, I mean, it's more, I just find it kind of unfortunate character writing because they don't address it. Oh, right, yeah, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was going to say, oh, yeah, the fact that they don't address it, that's, oh, I see what you mean, because I, I thought you meant, oh, she, she's not racist anymore, that's a bad thing, it's like, wait a minute, oh, what? That's great, that's great. The fact is, for me, is the reason why I prefer Zyhark is they address Zyhark's kind of willing, if he, uh, they address the fact that he doesn't like the fact he's working with Lagoos, well, he's working to kill Lagoos. Uh-huh. That's my frustration with Jill in Path of Radiant and Radiant Dawn, because this is the kind of thing you have to address in this kind of game, but they don't. Well, they don't address a lot of things, because Radiant Dawn's trying to do so much at one time. Yeah. Still love Radiant Dawn, but it's... It. Well, Radiant Dawn, well, again... I know lots of people that love Radiant Dawn, don't get me wrong, again, it's a very thing, but Radiant Dawn is one of those games where, it, like, I don't know anyone who thinks it's like 100% perfect, because it's not, I'm sorry. It has some of the biggest flaws of any Fire Emblem game. You can love it just fine, and lots of people do, but you know, it has lots of problems. You know, I found this uh, part interesting here, the role where you just uh, uh, baited the archer to come after you. It's yeah, well, again, it's because I don't want him to go after Lelina. Yeah, but actually, if you uh, position Lelina correctly, yeah, they want to attack. The hallway and there's gonna deal with uh, you later on. Yeah, but again, so, but again, if, like especially on hard mode, if you forget like to move Lelina, it's like, well, she did. <laughs> then you again, you're you, and you're Dead not to the first archer in hard mode. Yeah, well, that ha that happens again. That happens in this chapter. Chapter eight, you die to the first archer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, all again, it's, uh, such big HP. But again, oh, another thing that ha this hard mode does, which I think is kind of cool, is that in you know the area that Wendy and stuff spawn from. Later on, there will be units that spawn from there that weren't in normal mode, and I like that detail because again, I like when hard mode actually adds more enemies into other places and actually changes up stuff. Because I think that makes it feel like more of a hard mode, so to speak, rather than just let's just buff every enemy but not change where or like what enemies they are aside from maybe promoting a few. Like, some of the better hard modes will actually do that, and even some of the bad ones. I'm sorry, Radiant Dawn, I love you, but don't go taking out weapon triangles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it helps some units, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah it makes hard even more broken. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it kills Edward. Unfortunately, it does kill Edward. Like, I feel like if you're going to add more enemies to like every spot in hard mode you should do it like really respectfully like for, like path of radiance maniac mode um the japanese exclusive mode for path of, uh, for path of radiance that is like overkill that's yeah, too many enemies that is often considered the worst hard mode in all the fire but like worse than lunatic plus yeah yeah only gets of like the game itself right the best is Hector hard mode and that's I, just because I mean I, I kind of feel that he changes stuff yeah I do feel that I do that's one of the things I do like about Hector hard mode is the fact that it's like aside from getting new like chaps and stuff like that because you're on Hector mode but the enemies do change sometimes it's not for the best like Cog of Destiny they go from infantry units that are very very to literally just let's just spam everyone with magic users but at least it, I can give it praise for being at least different you know, it's not the same layout, so you do have to adjust and adapt accordingly. I haven't... Uh, the slog of density. I haven't uh, finished the Telius games yet, but it's... Uh, for me, when it comes to Fire Emblem, there's uh, like two titles that sometimes I just come back to. One is like Binding Blade, the other one is uh, Freysha, the long forgotten uh, Fire Emblem games. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that one's got quite... Again, these two have the like cult following, so yeah, o uh, is here, and then um, Bastion and Wendy's like, oh my god, why am I back here again? I thought we already solved this conflict. Yeah, um, well, Zephyr got resurrected from the dead and now they're invading. What? Again? This stupid country. That's like, I've got, <laughs> that's like I've got to be back Auburn. in business. <laughs> well, Roy's about as good at governing as Hans is as a twist villain, so... 
So, yeah. So Wendy's like, oh, I gotta clean this shit up again. It's like, but Wendy, it's hard mode. Yeah, it didn't stop me. <laughs> yeah, well, people said I couldn't go through normal mode, and look what happened there. So yeah, so Wendy's here and I'm going to try, you'll see throughout this thing, and train her up. It's not easy, I'll tell you that much. It requires a lot of patience because Wendy is so bad she dies to the first archer. Well, but, but Blaze, do you think that Wendy is worse than Boar? Than, than what? Than Boar's? Well, no, no, like, is she, like, worse than, like, than... Barth, the other knight you get. Oh no, he no no no. She 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 is worse than Barth because Barth could at least do his job as a knight, as in hitting hard and taking hits. Wendy can't do either, at least not starting out. Yeah, Wendy is one of the worst units in the game, uh, competing with Sophia. But, yeah, literally, uh, it's one of the I, two. If you say yeah. Wendy's worse than Sophia, I totally get that. I think Sophia is a bit worse, but literally, like it's either Wendy or Sophia. It's like no one else come is worse than them. <laughs> no matter what way you look at it, no one else is worse. No, Wendy is bad, but she's like a guilty pleasure, so I like to train her up. So yeah. Mia is yeah. just uh, no hope. Yeah, so Bob can, yeah, Bob can at least take the hits and deal a lot of damage. Took, a, took, no, no. It took nearly Ooh. half that dude's HP. The real question with Sophia is, is she the worst, well not Sophia, Wendy, is she the worst knight in the series? Because yep. it's either her or, oh she is? Yeah, straight up, worst knight. Because here, like, other knights like Arden, uh, yeah, he's terrible for the um, game because of how the map is thing. But in terms of actual stats, he's he's actually pr really good physically. If I were in any other game, he'd actually be solid. Yeah, because he has that one niche where the I think on chapter three that bridge with all the brigands. If you actually place him there, he will just destroy them. Especially with the pursuit ring, he will just annihilate them. Ooh. There's the only competition for Wendy that I heard about, but I never seen is Meg. <laughs> and it begins. Yeah, Meg isn't as bad as Wendy because, again, she has better starting stats, and you know the game is also not as harsh to her. Uh, and there it goes again. <laughs> Fuck you, Archer. I don't like her at all. Oh, here we go. First level up. Let's see what she gets. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> that's a good start. That's, that's a good start. And then, and then no, and, so, and, and somewhere off in the distance, a cold shiver just went down Sophia's spine. Oh, <laughs> oh god, not again. <laughs> yeah, but again, one level up is not enough. We gotta, you know, it's gotta be multiple. Yeah. I also usually give her the like the secret book that gives her two skill, so she's gonna get some ex uh, sorry skill that's yeah. going to help her in uh, gaining more levels and more kills. Yeah, I I don't she oh, yeah fucking missed the eighty four. Gosh, game. Wow. <laughs> no, but um, I didn't bother with the um uh not no, for some of them. I do remember. I think I give Shana a uh, thingy later, uh, angelic robe later on, but. For the most part, I don't use any of the items until, because you know, there's a split route with like Zakea and uh, A and the B route. So I don't use any of the items till we get to the end once I have a proper canonical like, oh, this is the team I'm using and there's no more split pathways. It's gonna be canonical yet? Hmm? Be the canon route? Uh, oh, I already know what it is. I ain't telling them though. <laughs> and Lance Skids. Yeah, well, I, 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 in terms of which one was canon, it was more to do with which one was my overall team better stat-wise, because obviously level ups vary per pathway, and also you can get different items at different stages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so Jared, yeah. The most important stat in the game, speed. <laughs> well, speed and strength. Um, but, um, so yeah, Jarrett is replacing Marcus, not because I have dislike Marcus, just because I thought I want to use a different Paladin, plus Jarrett, aside from skill, luck, and res, all of his stats are better and his weapon ranks are better, so it's literally like, I'm just gonna use him. <laughs> but he's still doing an excellent job, again, of making the enemies really, really weak. He's not killing them, but he's putting them at a point where I can just wipe them out real easily. And that's... And he takes a good beating. Yeah, yeah, he's got more HP than Marcus too, and he's bulkier. So, yeah. And away we go. Is it used on this run or no? Pardon? Is this run or...? So you keep you keep um, thinking before, like, uh, your voice gets muffled right before you ask which um, unit. <laughs> you mean this one, right? Oh, yes, yeah, um, Lelina, I was gonna do the same thing with Wendy, where I was like, I'll try and use her as much as I can before Chapter 9, just to see if um thing because again like i said i need to um what's its face recruit to other units plus you know having another mage and binding blade does help just because um 
what do you call it again? A lot of the enemies don't have a res stat, and with maps it's like it's like Arcadia, I was just like, I'm really gonna need it for like, um, as much help as I can get. Yeah. I I actually meant to say Chlorine. Oh, Chlorine. Yeah, I'm still using Chlorine because Chlorine's just mounted healer. The only thing is, I swapped out Ellen for Saul because Saul has a better stat and growth spread. And stuff. So, I mean, if you need a healer, I would advise to use Clarine. Or oh, yes. If not, and you, you're going to pick, obviously, Soul. But yeah. I think that Clarine does a really good job and has a really good support. Yeah, she does. The only problem is her magic growth is, I think, it's 20%. But again, she has the, she has the mounted utility. Oh, and speaking of Clarine, here she is. Stick a healer on a horse. They're gonna be good. <laughs> it's like, again, it's like the Elise and Sakura debacle. Oh my god, oh, I'm so happy she's getting magic. The rare moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the Elise and Sakura thing, like, you know I mean? Yeah, whatever you want about the characters, they all have their perks, but let's face it, Elise is on a mountain, Sakura isn't. <laughs> yeah. Sakura, I, I prefer Sakura just because, I don't know, there's a part of me that prefers a slightly... Ooh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, that, that's Binding Blade for you. <laughs> I know. I'm just even looking at uh, which turn we are on, because I think, like, uh, next turn, the thieves are going to reach the door, right? Yeah, but they don't do anything. It's like, we open the door, now what? Mm -hmm. uh, stare at them. A little girl. <laughs> except they don't have... Except they can't do any damage. No, they, they can, especially to Lelina they can, just they don't. So the idea of making thieves have low strength, because I get the fact you would think they wouldn't be, but how do you expect them to actually be able to steal something if they can't even open a pickle jar? Uh, you'll be surprised. <laughs> Go, Wendy! Fuck you! <laughs> Retaliate! <laughs> that was lucky. That was lucky indeed. And now it's another level up. That one, you see, that one wasn't very good. But again, we're, we're still going, we're still going. It's you can't... actually should be good. Yeah, hopefully. We'll have to wait and see. Again, it's one of those things. Here. Don't get greedy, Wendy. Don't get greedy. <laughs> I've never understood with Fire Emblem. How can people attack through walls? It depends on, I don't know, how, how low bearing is the wall. I mean, if it's one of those ones where, yeah, literally, like, there's, like, it's, it's a, yeah, there's no, like, you know, um, it's, like, it's literally from, from start to ceiling, then, yeah, that would have been highly questionable. But hey, it's for, for the sake of for the sake of convenience. Taking a forty-seven percent chance to hit. Yeah, I know. Sometimes you, again, you got to be risky in these things. So yeah, uh, Roy meets Kath again, and this is actually the interesting conversation about where she bring, goes into like how a lot of the noble houses abandon villages and stuff like that, and how they suffer from the war, which kind of opened Roy's eyes. And again, I wish this was something they expanded upon because it's really really cool. And other parts of the game do you know attest uh, not attest do compliment this with like you know Rorts and Arcade who were like you know um. What do you call it? Euthurian nobles just defecting to burn because they're a bunch of cowards. Just the problem with Binding Blade as a whole, in terms of its story and Roy as a character, it's because of what you were saying about how this was slapdash. I have a feeling this kind of has X6 syndrome, where because it was sort of rushed, it's really, really undercooked. Oh yeah, very by the numbers. I mean, that's not to say everything's undercooked. You know, some of the supports are very thing, and the villains are fleshed out. They're fleshed out very well. But you know, when you look at the main character, especially when compared to other farming games, even for the time, it's just kind of there. Yeah. It's a simple but enjoyable story, in my opinion. Oh yeah, simple but enjoyable. But you know, with Fire Emblem, you know, we've come to expect more. E again, even before, even like before, because when you consider how more narratively focused the likes of Frasier and Jean Anjou were. Incredible story, and I don't know how. Oh my. Unlocked. Also, this is where the chapter really begins, because now the reinforcements will show up, and then on hard mode, you actually get those on, from two directions, and it can really throw you. Up. Yeah, yeah, it really can, but this is also, you know, this is a great place to, like, train and all that jazz. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> can't steal weapons. I'm like, motherfucker! <laughs> Rip killer ball. Yep. Give me the damn lockpick. <laughs> Cue the Rocky music! Yeah. Uh, don't worry, you can get uh, another Killer Bow in Chapter 9. Oh yeah, I know, it's just one of those things like, God damn it, I was really, really looking forward to that Killer Bow. But then, like, Killer Bows are insane. <laughs> Sorry, can you say that again? Like, 
But then, if you were to take that killer ball, like, who would use it at this point? Oh, at this point, uh, no, but I, I, um, I don't know. But at the same time, it's just it would just be nice to have, just to have on standby. When he, yeah. <laughs> when he were working nine till five, trying to get these damn level ups. <laughs> I mean, the last one she got was pretty good. Yeah. Oh, they are. Right. They actually had, like talked about the noble stuff. Like that was always one of the positives. That's one of the biggest positives of Dreyas' story is they talk about nobility and the issues with it. Yeah, they really go into the world and how, like, you know, and why um, the noble system, like, what if it's like what if it's positives and negatives and how it's affected the world. Like, they really go into it. Yeah. Ooh, this game, but. Uh, there is no game I want more to be remade because I know the amount of potential this game has. Yeah, I'm the same because again, with game with a game like um to me with something like uh um, geology, the base foundation is already really solid. It just needs a lot of quality of life updates. Whereas Binding Blade, I can think of so many new way, like things that could that can be changed and altered to make it better. But that's just me personally. Yeah, I think like uh, Genealogy had one of the best stories mm -hmm. of Fire Emblem, and in order of remakes, it would be the next one actually that would uh, come. But uh, now that we have three houses, I'm not really sure if that's the next one they're going to pick. Well, again, now now it's very even because everyone fought off Echoes. Okay, we're doing Binding Blade next because you know people know Roy and it pairs with FE7 and so on and Smash Bros. But then, considering how much was taken, you can see how much was inspired. But um, Free Houses was inspired by genealogy, so people are thinking, oh, well, they might do genealogy next. Because again, they clearly were heavily inspired by it. Genealogy, there's not much I need to fix other than just, in my opinion, just quality of life stuff. And basically, I'd say give a purpose to non mounted units. Yeah, just, because... yeah, maybe alter the map design to make it a bit more fair towards them. I don't know how much they could do that without losing what makes genealogy genealogy. That's true, yeah, identity crisis, that might be a problem. I mean, I get a lot of people have said, why not split up the, because again, many of the chapters in genealogy are a case of, you have multiple objectives, so they said, why not change it so that each objective is its own chapter, so they're, they're smaller and more condensed. Apologies. I mean, the problem would be if genealogy would be remade. They need to change something about this because, like, the arena, the trading. Oh, yeah, some, some yeah, like, again, quality of life updates and stuff like that. You, drop. you cannot just carry and drop your units. You are, if you're gonna use the wanted units, then. Well, we're getting there, we're getting there. She's got six strength now. Yeah, and uh, what else would I wanted to say? Uh, yeah, like the enemies, they have weapons with infinite uses. That mm. also snakes. Yeah, again, just a, a lot of balance fixes and all that jazz. Is that it's a game I want to see remade, but it's a game where it's not like with Binding Blade where I want massive overhauls. Genealogy, I primarily just want some seriously quality of life update. Yeah, again, you so just want the game to be a bit really more, needs. yeah, a bit more well designed and well, um, just like well executed. Because I feel like Shadow Dragon Dragon support Dragon. system. Mm -hmm. I played Shadow Dragon and it felt so weird that we have uh, a Fire Emblem game on DS where we don't have support. I know, just because then they tried to be very um, faithful to the NES game. In fact, like, even the script from the NES to Shadow Dragon is not that different. Whereas, you know, obviously with, um, what's its name, they fixed that. But, like, if you compare, like, what they did with Echoes, like, Echoes really overhauled the entire game in terms of story and everything. Shadow Dragon, if you look, compare the scripts, didn't change that much. Fun. And as a result, I think Echoes is actually one of my favorite Fire Emblem games. Mm -hmm. So, if they take, like, the same kind of care they did for Echoes, so, like, put in a lot of quality of life, Make yep. it so that it's for a new audience and full voice acting and remakes of an already great soundtrack. Yeah. Jesus Christ, this is this Wendy is on fire already level six with a seven strength. Well, again, it's definitely useful, and of course, I'm having Roy and Lillian support because their support builds so bloody quickly. That and I like them as a couple. They're cute. <laughs> Are you planning to train somebody on 8x? Because that, usually I think that one is the Lilina training ground. Yeah, I'm gonna train them both on 8x as well. The only thing I'm worried about is the fucking boss, because oh my god, it, it, like 8x's boss is actual bullshit. If you really go for it, even Lilina can kill him. Well, again, the one thing, yeah, again, the magic users can hurt him, but it's just that he's a hero. Like at this early on in the game with a th throne bonuses, no fucking way. 
8x is a chapter that is actually potentially my favorite in the game, and by that I still think it's wildly average. But I think a lot of what causes that is just, I think, with, what's it called, 8x, mm -hmm. it just, a lot of what helps is because it is the chapter where you get Durandal, and it's very similar to its 7 chapter, which, except way bigger, Yeah, but... And I like the chapter in seven, honestly. Well, it's got, it's got a cool atmosphere. It's got some, you know, it's um, and stuff like that. It's it's more of a, it's more, it's a bit more like um, I don't know. You got to be a bit more spatially aware because we had all the flame pillars coming up. Hey, first, I'll, I'll, I'll take the level up in speed. I'll take a fucking level up yeah. in speed in Lelina's case. <laughs> oh well, all okay. Sorry, in all the cases. Yep. I think, like, after this chapter, the game becomes a bit uh, easier. Well, again, uh, uh, to be fair, chapter 7 was the real, like, difficult point. Um, this one isn't too bad, there's just a lot of enemies, but they're not too difficult, there's just a lot of them. And I mean a lot. Like, it said that, like, chapter, like, around chapter 7 on normal modes when people give up, like, I was able to power through that, mm -hmm. but, like, what caused me to just drop the game? Chapter 10. Which one? There's two one. of them. One where... I got Elfin, I think, was the one I got. Oh, that's a bot three dudes. So... Uh, that would be... Yeah, so, oh, yeah, so that would be the one with Klein. And that one, but that, that's the one with, like, the walls that, like, lead up. Yeah, that's, that's the one with Klein, yeah. I got to a point where, literally, I, I can't recruit these people. I had to deal with some really bad RNG because I was having Gonzalez tank. Mm -hmm. Like I'm done for a while. There, those that 10A, right? Sorry, 10B and 11A are definitely chapters that are very full on. They require a shit ton of micromanagement. There's a lot to do and they're very rewarding and then you, know, you get right, nice rewarded. But there's a lot you've got to deal with. Trust me, again, I, again, I experienced that first time on hard, but there's a lot you've got to deal with and you've really got to micromanage. I usually prefer the Echidna route. I prefer it too. The chapter, yeah, the chapter 11, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of things that can go wrong very quickly if you are slow. Oh yeah, yeah trust, oh that, god, that was the worst. It, it's just more brutal. Yeah, again, if, you, if you're not fast, just everything gets screwed over, so you've really got a powerhouse through. Yay, more speed. More <laughs> speed. Oh, Unless she, like, randomly stops, like, getting good levels, I have a feeling Wendy may be you. We might be. Again, well, again, Wendy can only get so good. Because, again, I'm not asking, expecting her to be Marcus levels. That's just, that's ridiculous. But I'm just trying to get, get, do the best I can. But so far, she has been performing pretty damn well. Ow. <laughs> it's like in 7 trying to expect, like, oh, Hector's going to be better than Marcus. It's like... No, no one's going to be better than Marcus. <laughs> yeah about like i try not to like look at this game as a sequel to seven because if i do that I'm well it's not more mad. well technically seven yeah. came afterwards again you can't really yeah you, you can't blame this game for having stuff that seven uh, like introduced because this game didn't have it that's just unfair and call introductions it's more just story and just uh, i get this does make sense to come after seven but literally there is almost no regard given to any thing of Seven's plot points and its characters. Like, Elwood is so shafted to the side. <laughs> well, again, Hector's like I said, death. this game came first, it's just that because it's a prequel, you have a lot more... To, and, and also, maybe because it was the first um, one in the West, they put a lot more emphasis on the characters and stuff like that. Because that was one thing that got critics really praised FE7 for. It, it was, they really liked the character dynamics. You know, like, Binding Blade is the first game I think that there is... Uh... They made without Gaga, and it was, yeah. And uh, I still see some similarities. Like, Wait, I, I, I think uh, I think Wendy's doubling this dude. Yeah. Yep, here we go. It begins. Wow. <laughs> okay, so like chapter seven yeah. is uh, like chapter six from Frasia, but backwards. Instead of you try to get out, you just try to get in. Yeah. And well, that, is, that like, is interesting. Yeah, it is interesting because you know, many people have noted that. <laughs> um, what the fuck? <laughs> Game. I have so no, but a lot of people have noted that uh, Binding Blade is essentially a GBA version of Shadow Dragon in terms of just general story, and even though like, some of the way the characters look and their sprites, because I think with um, oh, Binding Blade, because Binding Blade actually went through development hell, so they probably wanted to play it very safe. 
Yeah, if you look at the characters like Milady and Minerva, or yeah. you have Deke and um, oh, what's the name? Ogma, Ogma. yeah. Or even the Christmas. I with Lance and Allen. Like, look at Lance and Allen. They look a lot like Kanan. Yeah, I mean, there's always the Cave and Ale archetype, but those ones are like blatant. Marcus, obvious Jigen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even like Bors looks like um, Draug. About it is that I get trying to play it safe, but honestly, uh, it comes to a point where it's like, if I want to play Shadow Dragon, I'll just play the DS remake. Yeah, th this was bef yeah, but this was before the DS remake. You gotta remember. You got a lot of luck with Wendy, I would say. So far, yeah, I think so too. And again, that's one thing, Lena. I'm gonna be good in this mode, but if there's a knight, I'll fuck him up. <laughs> I think maybe Wendy just has a thing. You just have like maybe some oh, yeah. magical powers with Wendy. Like she. It's not just. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. not just Wendy. I mean, look look what happened with Lynn. <laughs> I just love that. Get the killer. Don't worry. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Dead. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it, don't worry, I'm professional. <laughs> Cap's like, fuck this, I'm out. No, but again, it's not, it's a, it's a lot of bad units, to be honest with me. It's just one of those things, it just happens to think. But Fire Emblem is one of those series where, you know, units can go any way, unless you do, like, a restricted 0% growth run. But, you know, you, you know, even the worst of units can turn out amazing. I, I, again, I've seen people actually clear thingy with Bantu, believe it or not. Yeah, you can do that on normal mode. You can uh, make even Sofia good on normal mode, but on hard mode, you better stay clear from these uh, bad. Yeah, again, I might be using them, but that's because I'm insane. Yeah. I'm the one for whatever reason. Every three, and this is no joke. Every three houses run. Every archer has bad speed. Mm -hmm. And almost every art, and every time I use Claude, he always has really good strength. Well, then you want really good strength with Claude. You do because then you get him on a horse, you get him on a flop, you get him on a wyvern, and then he's amazing. Guiding yep. ring. Yep, guiding ring indeed. That's get all that Lilina, treasure. Right? Pardon? That's for Lilina, right? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Could be for Saul. Could be for Hugh. Lou, sorry, Lou. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and of course Ruka takes down the boss because you know for the first, uh, for the most of the um, good chunk of the game, Ruka's literally the boss killer. Mukas or Marka. Mar Marcus or Rutger. No surprise there. Yeah, once well, again, it's the hard mode bonuses. And literally in the next chapter, I think even the professionals say, if you don't bring Rutger with hard mode bonuses, you're not going to beat the boss. You need Rutger. And there's many ways to kill that boss, but uh, Rutger is your safe best. Choice. Yeah, he is your best bet. And the chapter is done. We finally taken, retaken the castle, and sorry, but Hector's dead. <laughs> On promotion, still like it look like a giant banana or. What, the Elysium Whip? No, uh, Lou. Oh, yeah, Lou does look like a banana. Everyone says that. He looks like a banana skin. Like a weird... A banana came to life. Banana boy. <laughs> he, he escaped, um, uh, Donkey, uh, Donkey Kong's Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to imagine... Oh, actually, Matt, it's... Oh, I just thought of something. Smash Brothers. Roy vs. Donkey Kong. Oh, you stole a banana from my horde into the pit. Um, in Smash Bros, Roy has the Roy has the benefit of actually being good. Donkey Kong has a grab game. True, but Roy, um, but look at that tier list. It's yeah. either Roy or Lucina. It's one of the two. I mean, Super Nintendo's Donkey Kong Country Two is still my favorite game of all time. Donkey Kong Country Two is one of the best platformers ever made. But anyway, so yeah. that. That is the end of chapter eight, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you all very much to my co-commentators for joining me for this. As long as I thought it would take. Well, again, a lot of it was down to the editing. So next time we're going to get to Rundell, we're going to be in a very hot situation and we're going to see if Lelina and Wendy are good enough to join us for the rest of the game. Until then, thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care and have a wonderful day.